If you're going to take the risk of running advertising online, shouldn't you get the benefits of learning from someone who's in the platforms every second of the day? Welcome to BidPixel.com's Marketing Ear Biscuits, the original podcast dedicated to digital advertising run by two Aussie guys who ride around in kangaroo pouches and drink Fosters and 4X beer. Hey guys, it's been a little while. Uh, honestly, Jay and I have been under the pump over the last couple of weeks. And while we've had a few guests that have come into the podcast and we've had a, a good chat with like JD and Josh Remington, we have neglected the purpose of why we started this podcast a little bit, but it's been for the greater good of BidPixel and building the agency, right? So um, you all know Jay. Jay, hello. Hey, how you going? Good to be yeah. back again. Yeah, it's good to spend some time with you in this uh, format, mate. So one thing that we've been doing over the last couple of months is asking people to ask us their tough questions. And it's about time we started going in-depth and answering some of these tough questions. So um, what we're going to do today, guys, is there's a few of these questions where I can kind of speak into the like the marketing strategy side of things, like the overall why you'd want to do it. But then I'm going to hand it off to Jay because he can really talk about how to implement it in Facebook or the platform like Google. So... Mate, let's just get started. Um, Amber Hannam has asked the question, when do you know the right time to scale Facebook ads? And is there a right time? Great question. Um, yeah, there's a right time. Um, there's so many factors that come into it. Um, and I think there's so many factors that come into it if you want to scale in a way that's healthy to your business. Um, and that's one thing I guess we really want to, you know, we always want to focus on with our clients is it's one thing, for instance, is ramping up your ad spend. If your account's not in a health position to do that, there's no point. There's also, you know, the other, on the other hand, we can ramp up the ad, ad accounts in a health position, but the back end systems of your, of your business are in a healthy position to doing it. You don't have your fulfillment, you know, your dispatch and fulfillment set up. So, in terms of the right time to scale, I would say look at it holistically. You know, first off, is your business set up to scale? You know, do you have the systems and processes in place to handle increased purchases, increased inventory, increased staffing, um, the needs that come along with you know, a higher revenue business? Do you then have you know, the dispatch you know, you know, areas of the business? Do you, do you have people... You know, are you fulfilling in-house? Are you drop shipping? Are you printing on demand in-house? Are you using an external company to print for you? Like all of those things, you know, are they in place and are they ready to go? Do you have the cash flow to, um, you know, if you're expecting an influx of 100,000 sales where you've only been getting 1,000 sales, do you have the cash flow to bankroll getting those products, you know, made for you or sent to you ready to go? Um, yeah, that's probably the first thing I would look at. So that's all like the business process side of things. So we've got plenty, yeah. of, cu plenty of customers that get stuck in maybe the pre-order cycle or plenty of customers that get stuck in the labor side of things. They just don't have the labor to scale. Um, I really want to hear from you though on the return on ad spend metrics and what happens to an ad account. So a Facebook or Instagram ad account, what happens to that typically when you try and scale? Yeah, perfect. So on the ad account, so there's a few key things we want to kind of that we look at. One of them is consistency of on the on on the ad account, and that's positive consistency. So the ad account constantly has a healthy return. Um, there's you know a fairly you know there's regularity in terms of how many purchases a day, a month, a week. Um, that the account's getting and also consistency around the cost per purchase. Um, and and that it's also well above what the minimum returns need to be. So, so you know, can I speak on to that for a second? So yeah. one of the, one, uh, we'll put a link in the description of the, the podcast and the vlog, but one of the things that we do very religiously with customers, make sure that you understand what your break even return on ad spend is. And, I've been finding more and more people just don't get a sound understanding of this. So what is a return on ad spend? For every $1 you spend on advertising, it's how many dollars you make in return. So most businesses, e-commerce wise, maybe two and a half times return on ad spend is like a litmus test of a, a break-even return on ad spend. So 
for every $1 they spend, they need to make $2.50 just to recoup their costs on product, wages, advertising, those sorts of things. Yeah. That gets more complex when you start charging, man- agencies charge management fees and there's multiple complexities there. But one of the things that will generally happen, and I'm sure Jay, you'll speak into this a bit more, is if you don't understand your return on ad spend break even point, it's very hard to judge a good time to scale. And if you start scaling, you find that you go backwards and you literally, you're pumping more money into the business just to break even or not going anywhere. And it becomes pretty obvious pretty quick that there's no money left in the bank. So what's one of the big things, mate? So one of the big strategies of scaling an ad account is introducing more people to a brand. So a top of funnel awareness strategy. Now, what generally happens to a return on ad spend metric when you start scaling awareness to get more people involved in the business? Um, so, yeah, so getting more traffic is a huge thing. Like how do you, you know, literally you can push into the top of funnel and brand awareness um, style objectives where you're getting in front of a lot more people um, and then really starting to strategize their, the progression from, from when somebody hears about you for the first time. Um, strategizing the path from hearing about you the first time right through to becoming a a customer and then back again to repurchase in the future. Um, So yeah, that's where we kind of, we start to to blow out each section of that funnel, um, which is probably the more, the, the marketing term, you know, expanding certain sections of the funnel, diving deeper into certain sections of the funnel. You know, we can expand on the middle of funnel audiences or, really segment down the top of funnel audiences and, and niche down to specific demographics and specific audiences in, in all that and then test it and test the measure as we go. There's been some really naive sort of fundamentals in Facebook advertising for a long time where you can you see all these people that say they get an amazing return on ad spend, but a really high inflated return on ad spend is generally, and I'm generalizing here you look deep diving into it and it's usually a retargeting style strategy that's going to get a better return on ad spend and unfortunately if you don't have more traffic coming to the website or new people getting introduced to the brand you can only scale a retargeting or remarketing strategy so far before you exhaust your audience so a true test of when is the right time to scale is can you put hundreds thousands millions of people into the top of your advertising strategy funnel and successfully convert them into a purchase at some stage, middle or bottom. And if you aren't ready to do that, and if you can't do that successfully, then it's not the right time to scale. Absolutely. So a real world scenario, I guess, is is scaling a remarketing campaign. And and like you said, is a remarketing campaign might, for instance, have a 10 times return. And it's really great. But, you know, there are people that have been on the website that added to cart, they've had a very clear interest. You know, you, you then measure the, how, the frequency of, um, of ads that have been delivered to those people. If, for instance, you're getting, you know, you look at, say, Shopify and look at how many people have added the card in the last 30 days and say it's 300 people, you can spend $10 getting in front of those people or you can spend $1,000 getting in front of those people. The number of people doesn't change if you're purely focusing on remarketing. You're still getting in front of those same 300 people. You can up the ad spend. As a result, frequency will go up but your CPMs will go through the roof um, and really there's only going to really be the same amount of people in that audience that are going to purchase anyway, which is why we want to focus on getting your brand out there and the brand awareness and filling the top of the funnel. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a moment out of the content that you've been consuming right now and just discuss this promotion that BitPixel is doing currently. So for Q1 of 2020, so January through to the end of March, we're actually incentivizing you and we want to know what your toughest marketing or advertising question is. Now, we want to hear those questions on our Instagram account, so commenting on any of our posts or our YouTube channel, commenting on any of our current videos or in fact, any of the videos on our channel at all and we will go through and read those questions and use them as a basis of our content for future videos and pieces of content that we're making. Now, marketing is a transaction, right? You need to give and take to get someone's attention. And while we're asking you for these tough questions, we know that we need to give you something in return. So what we've devised is an outlandish prize of $50,000 cash to go towards your next marketing or advertising campaign. Now, we've had some feedback from this already, and some people think it's a little bit 
too good to be true. But I just want to take this moment out of the content that you've been listening to, to give you some assurance and give you a bit of an understanding of where that $50,000 cash is coming from and let you know that it's completely above board and legitimate. So within Australia, you've got the ability to do an insured prize sum. Now, while we don't have the $50,000 to give away, we use an insurance company to say that there is a game of chance involved and the winner will get the chance to spin a wheel and if they spin the lucky number, like if you're old enough and you remember Hey Hey It's Saturday and Pluck a Duck and the big chocolate wheel, if you spin the number and win, you get a genuine $50,000 cash to do with it as you choose or to spend it on advertising. Now, because it's a game of chance, some people might not want to take part in that. So what we've done is offered up two other prizes in the prize pool. And the first person who asks the toughest question or the person that we deem wins this promotion at the end of March will get the chance of which prize they like to choose. Yeah, they might like to spin to win and go for uh, their chance for $50,000 cash, or they might choose one of our supplementary prizes, which are the, the first supplementary prize is three months worth of strategy with our team. So you get three months of strategy with our Google Ads experts, three months of strategy with our Facebook ad experts, and three months of strategy with our conversion rate optimization and website development team. Now that's a pretty powerful prize in its own, and imagine what you could do after three months to generate revenue through your advertising and marketing. Now, if that doesn't float your boat, we've also got a locked safe. Now you can barely see it up on the screen here, but up on my shelving that you'll see in a lot of our videos is a safe that says win me and it's actually been locked for quite some time now. The contents of that safe in November and December alone earned two of our customers over half a million dollars worth of sales online. So like I said, marketing is a give and take mentality, right? We want to take your tough questions and we want to answer them. And that's a selfish motive from us because we want to use those questions that you ask to then generate more valuable content for other people to consume. But we know that we need to give you something in return. And the reason why we're going outlandish with the $50,000 cash is we want to make it worth your while to take time out of your day to ask us a question. So that's it. That's our little internal ad as part of the content that we've just pushed out. I just want you to know that yes, it's a legitimate $50,000. We want you to have the chance to win that or one of the other prizes that we're offering. And all we need in return is for you to ask us a marketing or advertising question that you genuinely want to find out an answer for. Uh, thanks heaps. Let's get back to the content that we're talking about at the moment. And if you did want to take part in this promotion, just go to bitpixel.com forward slash questions. And there's all the information you need there. Cheers guys. So as a blanket rule, Jay and the team generally try and run if we're scaling an ad account aggressively and we need to introduce people to a brand and everything converts as it should, right? So the education and motivational stage of things happened, the making them problem aware or situational aware at top of funnel works and progresses down. Generally, what we find is up to 70% of an advertising budget could be placed at top of funnel. So introducing people to the problem or to your brand and then educating them and then trying to get them to purchase. So I think last time we talked about this, Jay, you had about 70% allocation of funds to a top of funnel strategy with um, like 15 to 20% of an education and motivation. Now, the big thing that we find is you introduce someone to your brand or you, you introduce someone to a problem that they have. And although you can fix that problem, you've now made them aware of that problem and there's the potential that they go shopping on your competitors' websites to solve that problem. So middle of funnel has a fairly large place to educate and motivate them that they should be purchasing or consuming from you. So 70%, yeah. 70% top of funnel, 20, 25% bottom, uh, middle of funnel, 5 to 10% bottom of funnel. And then I'm going to segue this fantastically into the next question which I'm skipping a heap of questions that we talked about before, <laughs> before we went live. And the next question is from Bedelia, which is a uh, ethical fashion brand that we've been uh, known of for a little while now. Um, their question is, what is the best way to split test and recognize a winning ad audience? That's actually not the question that I'm supposed to go to. Sorry. Um, the question that I was going to go to was um, Jonas Hag, which was how do you tackle an advertising campaign strategy which has the purpose of securing current clients for a small business uh, rather than trying to find top of funnel and awareness, how do you secure people who have already purchased from you before or are already in your nurturing sequence uh, for the pure purpose of retaining them and making sure they don't go somewhere else? So my segue was absolutely terrible. I'm sorry. But 
Oh, and you're, fro- you're frozen on me, Jay. Um, 70%. I'm back now. You're back. 70% top of funnel all the way down to, if I did my math right, technically I should have left 5% free. And that really is a win back campaign or a nurturing campaign of getting people to come back and purchase a second, third, fourth, fifth time. So Jonas's question, how do you tackle an advertising campaign for a win back purpose? Well, how do you do that? And what do we do with our customers? Yeah. So I guess I'll put a little caveat in there is when we're talking percentages, it, um, the biggest factor of that is what's the consideration process? Like how long is a consideration process for, a, you know, for our clients, customers, if it's a quick, you know, a $5 product that doesn't really take much thought of in terms of purchase. Sure. You know, we can really go hard at the top of funnel. There's not many objections to overcome. So that consideration process is considerably smaller. If we're going up, you know, if the client, sells aluminium, you know, aluminium pergolas and swimming pool fences and that sort of stuff, then the consideration is obviously a lot longer because they're talking about a fifteen, twenty, thirty thousand dollar purchase. So there's a much longer period. So therefore, you know, we really utilize that middle of funnel strategy to overcome objections. We put them through nurture sequences. We grow it out the strategy that way. So, so those numbers, you know, will be slightly different in that case. I completely segued to the next question without giving you the chance to finish the first. (laughs) That's fine. Um, Um, All right. So can we move on to Jonas? Yeah, definitely. How do we structure win back campaigns for our customers? It's probably the easiest way to answer this question. Yeah. So um, win back, um, I would say again, depends on, depends on the product. You know, we, we're not a cookie cutter agency. You know, we really want to have, have, individual strategies but some things we look at are um, the value of the client so you know are they a recurring client you know, in shopify we can see what the returning customer rate you can pull down how many times someone's purchased from your store um, you know put them into a vip list um, you know people that have you know purchased more than five times or more than 10 times or 20 times or people that have purchased more than 500 dollars or a thousand dollars worth of products and then, you know, and then people that have purchased over a time frame, you know, in the last 60 to 90 days or 90 to 180 days um, and using your custom list even further, you know, if it's an, an annual purchase, getting that back in front of people that purchased off you last November for, for Christmas gifts, getting them back again this year, um, you know, you know, building out a campaign specifically for those people in October this year, ready to re-engage them again and reactivate them for, for this upcoming 2020 Christmas season. I guess products have different buying cycles as well, right? Like some products are going to be a single purchase. If you're purchasing yeah. something for a baby, a wrap, that sort of thing, it's a single purchase. You might be able to get a gift buyer to come back and buy it for another person or for themselves. But you know, if it's a mother buying something for a newborn, until they have another child, you don't have the opportunity to sell newborn products. Um, someone like uh, Dr. Pickle's body wash that I've got up here on the shelf or Podbiotics coffee, right? Like they're a consumable product. And I think you need a smart strategy and you need to start learning what the buying cycle is. Like if you sell a 10 pack of coffee to someone, how many days does a 10 pack last and when should you be targeting them again? And your Facebook ad strategy can be built fairly robust and smart about retargeting ads based on time from purchase and conversion and start taking them through a journey or upselling and cross-selling them into another product. Um, Like Dr. Pickles, you could sell them from a three-in-one body wash to a tattoo care balm to a sunscreen to something else that they've got. Podbiotic coffee, you could sell them on a probiotic coffee, an organic coffee, a turmeric coffee, whatever coffee you want to coffee them, right? But coffee drinkers are going to come back and purchase again. So creating audiences based on your pixel fires and your conversion tracking is a really smart way of doing it in Facebook. Or you can tie in a platform like Klaviyo in Shopify or um, WooCommerce or BigCommerce. And Klaviyo is a really smart and intuitive email marketing platform that has a bit of machine learning that can kind of work out the optimum time for someone to come back to purchase. And you can hit them with emails at the right time or a Klaviyo audience can be shared to a Facebook audience and ad campaign. And you can kind of like start getting really smart about your advertising in that way. And it's I guess there's the old saying that there's three ways to make money in business. You get new customers, you get them to purchase more while they're at the checkout or while they're purchasing and you get them to come back and purchase again. And that whole setting aside budget in your Facebook advertising campaign for a win back or repeat purchase 
customer is a really good way of making more money. You've paid to acquire them once. It's going to be cheaper to acquire them the second, third, fourth, fifth time. Absolutely. So virtually when you're getting someone a second time, you remove them from the need for a top of funnel audience and you remove them from the need of a middle of funnel audience because they're already aware of your brand. They're already product aware, they're problem aware, and they've overcome all those problems once before. They're purely remarketing. So it's cheaper to get them to purchase again than what it is to get somebody to purchase the first time. 100%. And if you've ever bought something from Kogan or any of those large big box retailers, you'll see the ad sequence that you go through afterwards, which is it's almost targeting you with similar products or like-minded products or accessories. Like when I bought the GoPro for BidPixel the other month, like we then got targeted with all the accessories for the GoPro and different things for that, for that camera. And there's really clever ways that you can do it if you do it well. And if you don't know how to do it, reach out to your agency or someone like Jay and just get some good advice on how you can make money while the sun shines. Or I guess <laughs> is that a decent analogy, right? Absolutely. Cool, mate. There was like five questions. We just answered three of them and we've done 22 minutes of talking. So let's just wrap this one up, man. Yeah, sounds um, good. So Amber and Jonas, thank you very much for your questions, guys. If you have a tough question, ask it in the comments below. Our team crawls all the comments, gives us a list of them. Mate, we've got probably about 150 questions that we need to answer. So we need to actually <laughs> get cracking on this. I'm going to do some of them as a solo version. I'm going to get uh, some of the team in. I don't want to take your time all the time. But yeah, Craig, Scott, Karen, Pauline, Stephen, like I'm just reading now, like um, Sarah from Bell Fever. I'm going to answer your question, Sarah, because I want to work with you. Um, there's heaps of questions here. Paper made solutions. Uh, Bedelia, I need to get back to you now because I started asking your question and I realized it was not the right one. Jackie, Magda, Michael, we've got tons of questions. So guys, ask your tough questions in the comments below. Jay and I or one of the team will help try and get through and answer these questions. And just by asking a question, you can go in the draw to win $50,000 cash, the contents of a locked safe, or Jay and the team will grace your presence for a couple of months and help you with some strategy to get some of these tough questions actually implemented onto your own advertising accounts. Sounds great. You got Kaiser home today, mate. I can hear it. I baby. do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Family days. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> All right, mate. Thanks, Eve. Tape. Bless you. Thank you for your time today. I'll let you get back to doing what you do well, and that's making money for our customers. <laughs> no worries. Thanks Cheers, for your man. time. Cheers. Bye.